Support for WCBU's On Deck comes from Jaguar Land Rover Peoria on Allen Road. Offering personalized service to customers from their first visit to the store to when they drive their new Land Rover home. More at JaguarLandRoverPeoria.com. Washington takes steps to put a dementia-friendly title into practice. That's just one of the things you'll want to hear about to start your day for Tuesday, July 30th. I'm Colin Shope, and this is WCBU's On Deck. First on deck today, more resources are flowing into a congressional race designated a top possible pickup for the GOP. WCBU's Cameron Cutinello has more. The 17th Congressional District includes large portions of central and northwestern Illinois, including most of the city of Peoria. Freshman Democrat Eric Sorensen is the current 17th District Representative. The Moline weatherman turned politician defeated Republican Esther Joy King in 2022 by a little under 10,000 votes to fill the vacant seat left by retiring Democrat Sherry Bustos. Challenger Joe McGraw will be getting extra help from national Republicans heading into November. The retired judge has been named to the Republican National Committee's Young Guns program. It provides mentorship and other support to candidates in districts deemed competitive. However, on the financial front, Sorensen has outspent McGraw by a wide margin. Election data shows Sorensen has spent over $1 million with $3.5 million fundraised. McGraw has spent under 400000 and raised about 850000 about one-fourth of the total of the Sorensen campaign. The Cook Political Report currently rates the district as leaning Democrat. For WCBU's On Deck, I'm Cameron Cutinello. Here are some other stories we're following in the WCBU newsroom. Staff from Logan Correctional Center are rallying public attention in an attempt to keep the prison in Logan County. And drinking and driving can change someone's life in a second. That's why Tazewell County Deputy Sheriff John Schallenberger takes education seriously. Plus, some people in the Illinois hemp industry want to work with Republicans to regulate their industry instead of eliminating it. You can find more of these stories and all the details at WCBU.org. At the start of 2024, the town of Washington announced its new status as a dementia-friendly city. Officials told WCBU the designation, bestowed by the organization Dementia Friendly America, meant the town would become an easier place to exist for those with memory loss. Half a year later, I attended a Dementia Friend training and kickoff event to see what that looks like in practice and learn how different facets of the community are getting involved. Terry Hilligans, Tazewell County's director for the Central Illinois Agency on Aging, helped bring the program to Washington. You know, it just interests me. You know, I'm retired. I don't have a lot going on. So um, just seemed to be something I thought Washington would be a good good fit for that. So let's give it a try. During the hour-long training, Hilligans leads a group of about a dozen Washington community members and business owners through the basic facts of dementia, the warning signs, and how to interact with someone struggling with symptoms. Notably, he also talks about supporting caretakers in the community. That's a hard job to do, and it's very frustrating, It's uh, and it's endless. I mean, it's 24 hours a day. So I think the more support we can give to caregivers, the better off we're going to be. One of these initiatives has already started, a regular community support group for caretakers to meet, talk, and get connected with resources. Hilligan says the Washington arm of Dementia Friendly America has conducted about four of the training sessions so far, including sessions with the fire and police departments. The city is exploring the possibility of identification bracelets distributed by the police department for those with dementia in case they need help contacting a caretaker or finding a way home. But the efforts at city services expand beyond the emergency responders. We do a lot um, with outreach, so we actually bring materials to those who can't easily get to the library um, for whatever the reason may be. Um, so in some cases, it could be that they're having some memory issues and you know they're not allowed to be driving anymore. So we do um, 
twice monthly deliveries for those materials. That's Savannah McClellan, outreach librarian for the Washington District Library. Besides the delivery of materials, the library has also developed new programs aimed specifically at those with memory issues. Stay Sharp Kits, as the library has named them, contain a themed assortment of activities and materials to provide some mental stimulation. As an example, McClellan has one all about dogs. So there's some games relating to dogs and information, and it kind of helps bring back memories, you know, of times that like you had with your pets and stuff like that. Though you may not immediately associate libraries with supporting dementia care, McClellan says it's important for Washington organizations to get involved however they can. As a library, you know, we're always trying to meet the needs of our community, um, and some of those community members, they're having issues with memory loss, they're having issues with dementia, and so we're trying to meet them where they are and help improve those things for people in our community, and so we want to provide any resource that we can. That even includes the transportation in Washington. Jim Bremner is the Washington Township Supervisor and an outspoken advocate of a CityLink partnership that gives Washington seniors rides in town for just a couple dollars and to surrounding towns for six. We're an aging society, and that's in every community, but here we want to try to address that, um, you know, through the dementia side. My, my, my own story is my father passed away from it two years ago, and he had it for about two years before he passed. And when you get to the late stages, it's not very friendly. You know, it's a tough thing. Bremner has gone through one of the training sessions himself and thinks it's a good tool to raise the general level of awareness of the community. Chevy Creedy, the director of the Washington Chamber of Commerce, hopes the next step is more Washington businesses reaching out to Hilligons, undergoing their own training, and putting dementia-friendly stickers in the windows of shops all over town. A business, she says, may be one of the first places a person notices signs of dementia. If we can make sure that our front-facing customer service people in the community are aware of the signs of dementia, we can just make sure that people are aware, nobody gets themselves into trouble, and we just are really mindful of those in our community that are interacting with us on a daily basis. Washington is one of 30 Illinois cities officially designated dementia friendly. Nearby Eureka is also working to earn the status. Now before we let you go, an opportunity to play disc golf on the Peoria Riverfront today. Between 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. a $5 registration can get you on an 18-hole course along the riverfront made by Choose Greater Peoria. Online registration is full, but walk-ins can check in at Eckwood Park to play the course as time allows. And that's all for today. You can subscribe to WCBU's On Deck podcast on the NPR app, Apple, Spotify, or YouTube Music.